Hey, welcome back to the table. Uh, we're getting ready to start the uh, the tutorial mission. It is, uh, like I said before, it's very prescriptive. So I don't, um, I, according to it, I don't even need to read the rules. I did at least go through the rules once. So I at least can have an idea of what to expect. Um, I probably did it a little bit of a disservice because I compared it to Monopoly by saying you roll dice and just see what happens. That still is true. Um, but there are some good choice making, decision making things I think going on with this game. Um, and of course we're going to discover that as we as we move through this. Um, I was going to set everything up, but I think part of the process of this is that uh, you really should experience what, it, what uh, the tutorial is. And so I backed up and, you know, all I did was, here's my arrangement. We got the the player boards out. I am using the mats, which um, uh, I think they do a good job of showing the space around the character that you need. And then um, I do have it down now. This is engineering. That's security, the blue. The purple is science. And then this is recon. And if I ever need to remind myself it's written right there at the top <laughs> um now you could play without these uh boards because you can see here it's got um the same symbology here uh but there's no red green blue anymore and uh frankly i i don't know why you wouldn't want to play with those boards these boards are really nice um so uh put the board just right over top and i i don't think uh it was meant to be played uh, without the board. I think it's just there to show you that's where the board goes. Um, but anyways, uh, neither here nor there. Uh, so I got some things out. The I did choose to use the non-upgraded dice. I do agree with the other YouTubers. Um, it's just they're better. And uh, a viewer made a comment uh, that it's not just about uh, can you read them, but that the blue and the green uh, in the certain kinds of light, um, it's sometimes hard to tell the difference between them. And I have to agree because, uh, what happens is, uh, here, let me show you real quick. I'm sorry. I'm sidetracking here, but, um, so this is a blue, uh, dice. Uh, take notice that this side is very blue, but see, this is the other side, which you could still see blue, but then when you start getting down here, it almost looks black because it's such a dark blue that it's like a blacker blue. So it's not the same shade of blue all the way through. Well, when you get out the green one, you're really gonna see it. Um, so my apologies, I know all this uh, rustling is coming through on my microphone. So now you get out the green one. You can see here it's really, like that's half and half actually. This is really green and look how black that green is. So now you take um, the black side of it, and then you have the black side of the blue. You put those together. Which one's green? Which one's blue? Well, once you start memorizing all the symbols, maybe you'll get it. But this is a uh, Vanguard symbol, which is universal. Um, you can't tell that that's a green Vanguard versus a blue Vanguard. Um, and so uh, I think that was an excellent uh, point that a viewer made, and it really solidified my decision not to use the upgrade dice. Um, I think that's a big miss for Awakened Realms to add something that's supposed to be and it's labeled as quote upgrade and it's not. Um, I, it's really disappointing to be quite honest uh, and any YouTuber that didn't state that is really not being honest with you. Um, and uh, I know I, I try to be bold sometimes with my statements, and I don't do it intentionally. I, my friends will tell you I do it in my private life, too. Um, but uh, <laughs> I just, uh, I, 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 I do get frustrated. Uh, I love watching the videos that are made out there. I think this is a wonderful golden era for board gaming. But there is a trend to, um, to wear the pom-poms uh, so you could get free stuff. And, and the pom-poms are what causes people to, to really degrade the quality of, of what we experience as a board gamer because um, publishers should hear that they made a poor choice with the upgraded dice. They should not be told that everything's fantastic and it's wonderful. So um, 
anyways, that's that's my thoughts. Now, do I think they deserve to lose sales? Well, no. I mean, maybe they deserve to lose sales in the upgraded dice, but um, uh, you know, hopefully this is a great game. You know, and it's still worth buying the game. Just don't get the dice. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna go through the tutorial here, and I do have uh, my iPad, so we can. We're going to listen to the app, which um, uh, trust me, I'm doing you a favor because if I was reading the story to you, uh, you would uh, use it to, you know, cure uh, sleep apnea. <laughs> and uh, I got all the tokens out. Uh, we're just gonna follow what it says and and go from there. And then uh, we'll jump into the regular campaign, of course, after this, and, and then take off. Um, there is a comic book <clears throat> that comes with it. That's this. Uh, I contemplated, you know, do we go through the comic book or don't we? Um, it's, a, it's a silly comic book, to be quite honest. Uh, I don't think it's that amazing. Um, so really, uh, they found... Uh, some divine coordinates in their DNA. Everybody has like a DNA thing. And and trust me, if you've been watching videos from other people, they've gone through this too. Um, they consider it to be uh, all the DNA points to coordinates in the, in, the system, in the universe. And so they're going to these coordinates and they call them the divine coordinates. So we're heading out there and apparently we're going to be as unprepared and... Um, uh, unsupplied as possible once we get there. But anyways, um, uh, there was some uh, alien wreckage that was in Russia, and Russia, you know, uh, didn't want to share it with the world, but then the world pressured them, and, you know, uh, that alien wreckage combined with uh, other things allowed us to build a starship to take us out to those coordinates. That's the basic gist. Um, it, it's not awful. I just don't want to spend any more time than I just did on it. Let's get playing. Um, one last thing that I didn't cover. Uh, <clears throat> there are uh, tokens that come with the game. They look like this. Sorry, got to find a way to get around my camera there. They look like this and they got other numbers and stuff on them. They go in a bag because uh, those are tokens that you're going to draw when you do discoveries. And um, yeah, let's get started. So first thing they said is we need to gather tutorial deck A and tutorial deck B. So when you receive the game, you will have tutorial deck A and B. They will already be um, sorted. So just don't mess with the order. You're good to go. All right, so we got that. They want a danger die reference card. So here we go. This is the danger die reference card, uh, double-sided. And uh, um, so we're ready to go there. Then we need uh, our game round reference card, one per player. So there we go. Uh, it looks wonderful. Uh, obviously, we're going to put it to the test as we play, but uh, it definitely looks like uh, this is the number one thing board game designers screw up. And I don't understand how you could get to 2022 and not have a good reference card. Um, everybody wants one. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just like... Um, Van Halen. Everybody wants some. You need some too. And so um, I don't understand why a designer would not put these in. But I just opened like um, V Commandos the other day and it was missing one. So um, I, I, I don't get it. But but anyways, that's just a side rant. Uh, four crew boards. We got that in place. The card tray A and B. Okay, I got them. They're a little hidden over here. Section compartments. Um, so we got those. We're good to go. The Planetopedia, that's this thing right here. And then we have a start token, action tokens, and all the turn tokens. Okay, so that's these. So let me get these out. So we have this stuff. So basically, this means you haven't taken your turn yet, and that means you're done with your turn. So I basically think it's like one per player. So it looks like I'm missing one. And then uh, we don't want to ever see this one come out. And then, of course, uh, when it's your turn, you have two actions left, one action left, and then you pass it to the next player. And then there's a start player token. So I'm missing one of those. Oh, here we go. All right, so I'm going to give one of these to each player. And they actually give you a little section on the mat for it. Look at that right there. Isn't that cool? 
So boom, it fits perfectly. Uh, they did think of a lot of stuff with this. I I am impressed with that. The upgrade dice suck. The dice tower sucks, but that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, I'm going to make the recon the first player. Um, just because uh, it's recon. Why wouldn't you? Um, and so that means they also get this for when it's their turn. And then this we're going to uh, discard because we will never need to use it. Uh, at least that's our hope, right? So I'm just going to put that up on the table there. Okay, next we need 12 injury dice. We got that. We need two danger dice. Got it. Four rank one sleeve cards for each section. Okay, so this is where it's a little painful to do it by yourself. It's nice to have four players, right? Because this would go quicker. But basically, um, in each section, there's the rank sleeves divider. And then behind it, you have clear sleeves. Um, uh, if you've played some, what who, who does it? Like AEG games. Uh, this is a concept where, you know, they have the sleeves and then they got stuff printed on the sleeves. This is a rank one sleeve. So we're going to just grab a rank one sleeve, pull it out, and that's all you need. Put the rest back. And then, of course, I'm having trouble doing that. And then this goes back on. And remember, I got to, the index cards are getting in the way, so I got to push this a little bit to get this to come on and then it works all right so uh like i said the challenge here is because i'm playing by myself i now got to go through all four boxes and get one which means this takes four times as long if i had you sitting here at the table and each of you had one character we'd be done with this step already uh but that's how it goes I may uh, take the lids off of these things and just keep them off because uh, I think the lids are part of my problem. And in fact, I am going to do exactly that. Put the lids on whenever we're putting the game away. So there we go. We got four of those out. Uh, let's get these lids off. Okay. All right. Done. Next, it says. Ensure that all components, other than the ones listed, are placed back in the box. All right, fair enough. Um, choose sections. There's four sections. Uh, we went through that already. And uh, basically, uh, we're going to control all four. Uh, and then, of course, the player who controls security is considered the security section player. Some of the stuff is very... Uh, anytime you're logged. Okay, so we're moving on. Prepare the away team. Read this section after reading log one. So I did not show it to you, but they give you a log book with the game. It looks like this. It looks like an engineering manual. It's actually uh, fairly funny. Um, and it's basically like a choose your own adventure book. The, the log entries are in here and you flip to whatever log number and read whatever it is and then do whatever it says. But we're gonna go ahead and do the app so I'm going to flip over and let's get this going here and hmm. I'm realizing I'm using headphones so can you hear this? All right, we're going to do Do we want to play this tutorial? Yes. Good morning, crew. If you're hearing this, it means you belong to a small group of essential personnel waking up in the first wave. Let me bring you up to speed. For the last two years, Vanguard has been cruising safely to our destination, following alien coordinates to the main objective of our mission. Five days ago, we switched off the Alcubert drive and dropped to sub light speed. You might feel a bit heavy on the main deck. Gravitational compensators keep deceleration down to a slightly uncomfortable 2G. The red zones on the ship are locked and off limits, unless you want to experience what 90G feels like. We're now approaching our target. So far, sensors aren't picking up anything. But don't let that get you down. We're still a ways off, and... Collision course alert. Action required. Report. What's going on? Sir, we're detecting a massive cloaked object directly in our path. The calculations show we're 3 
beats from impact. Begin evasive maneuvers. Sir, this object is several times larger than our solar system. A diameter of nearly 200 astronomical units. Considering our current speed, I'm not sure we'll be able to adjust the course in time. How could we miss something as big? The object employs some active cloaking technology and does not seem to have any gravitational interactions with nearby systems. Sergeant Ahi, are the section leaders awake? Yes, sir. Get them up here and lock down the bridge. Not a word of this to anyone. We don't want to cause a panic on board. <clears throat> okay, so I did a awful job. So we're going to follow the step tutorial on page 11 of the rule book. I got to turn this down or otherwise you're going to hear the music in the background. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm wearing headphones because uh, in my Dungeon Universalis video, I started to have massive microphone problems using my phone, uh, the microphone that's with my camera. Um, I think it's largely because I'm using uh, Bluetooth to connect and there was it's just bandwidth issues it's not worth getting into but there was all kinds of synchroniz synchronization issues so the only way to resolve it was to buy um this headset and then of course i have this headset now and we're trying to play this app and and have you listen to it and i i'm i need to I, i'm worried because i didn't test this out first so i hope you were able to hear that i tried to make sure you could read it and then of course um once i'm done recording this first video i'm going to go back and check it and see how good it sounds. Um, I sometimes have to upload it all the way to YouTube because sometimes it sounds great on my computer but it doesn't sound great on YouTube. But I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i make sure I check it before I do the next video and then um, you know we can adjust accordingly and I'll figure something out. Um, so anyways, uh, going from there, uh, we have to bounce back and forth between using the app here, uh, which is purely just narrative. The app doesn't control anything with the game, so don't worry about that. Um, it's 100% narrative, and here it's just telling me to close. And then, in fact, from here on out, I'm just going to be punching in log numbers, and it's going to just read whatever log number we tell it to. So uh, I'm going to go ahead just to save my battery and shut it off, and we're going to set it to side, and let's get rolling here. Uh, okay, so it says prepare the away team. So here we go. We have to take the top four cards from the tutorial deck A, your starting crew members and give the crew members to the following section players. So um, this is tutorial deck A and you know please do not open until instructed. Well that is done now mister. All right so here we go one two three four and so uh, I'll save you the suspense. Uh, Riku is supposed to go with security which is blue and uh, it is a step that's later on but uh, we need to put these in there in their sleeves so I gotta do that here real quick so Rico goes in and then uh, let's see Amir is science now it's my understanding that just because Riku is security for this mission doesn't mean he can be security for all the missions like I could I could say you know what I prefer for you to be my science guy like I could do that and then boom he would go off and and be my science guy. So Joppy here is Recon. And then Cho is Engineering. Okay, so uh, we got our people. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the various cards. So for example, Mr. Joppy here would just go right on like so, like that. And then we do the same for the others. So I'm gonna get a mirror on here. All right, I can already tell you, I have an issue with, uh, like some of these boards are too far away for me to be able to read the card very well. And it's just because I'm old and my eyes stink. So I may have to come up with a different way to range these things so I could read them a little bit better. Or um, I'm just going to have to use my camera because I can zoom in with the camera and cheat a bit. They're almost like my bifocals. Um, okay, that is done. Select which crew members will be in the way team. All of them. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, 
For this tutorial, a mirror from the science section must be chosen. Okay, a mirror is chosen. I don't remember a mirror being on the science team. Oh, yeah, he is. I was wrong about that. Okay. Um, okay, place the crew boards in the away team for the controlling player. Place any unused crew. Da, da, da. Each player chooses a mini. Uh, go to log five. All right, so we're now getting out log five here. Capcom, this is the away team. We're approaching the target. Our short-range scans detect an outer shell of unknown carbon allotrope that seems to absorb all emissions. We have no way of knowing what's inside. We're already crunching your data, away team. I'll let you know if we find anything. No wonder we couldn't detect this thing. It was literally built to be invisible. Should we attempt the landing? No. We're not sure how resilient the structure is. Make a closer flyby and deploy a sample gathering drone. Roger, Vanguard. We're... Wait. I'm detecting something on the surface of the sphere. A metallic object embedded in its shell. Look here. The surface around it is cracked. Almost as if it crashed into it. It's turning toward us? We're hit! It's shooting at us! It's some sort of automated sentry anchored on the sphere! Abort. Do you copy away, team? Abort mission now. Okay. So we've crashed on the surface of an alien planet. Continue reading, prepare section dice and cards on page 12 of the rulebook. Okay, so uh, a little bit more back and forth. Um, again, I apologize if you weren't able to hear that very well. You could at least read the text for now until I sort out how I'm going to solve this problem. Um, hopefully this is coming through okay. And uh, let's keep going. I definitely want to get this uh, published tonight. Um, okay, so it says prepare section cards. It says, take the top 12 cards from the tutorial deck, three for each section. And you can see here, these are the section cards. So this is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So um, I'm going to pause the video. I just I realized something. One sec. Okay, sorry about that. I, uh, I just needed to sleeve the cards. So uh, here we go. So we did that. We gave everybody their cards. Um, so I put it into their section deck, which is here. So basically there's three cards for every player. Um, and it says each player draws two cards into their hand. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just draw two cards for each player. I'm willing to bet that they probably have certain cards that were supposed to be drawn. But that's okay. We'll go ahead and do this. Okay, um, then it goes into some anatomy of the cards. Open Planetopedia, which is this, and place it in the middle of the table. This is the planet board for the tutorial. Uh, the Eye of the Void, the object you have crash landed on. So we can identify that here in the top right corner. And um, remove from the game this side up. So tutorial deck B is now open. For business. So, um, uh, okay, take the top card, which is the rank up card. So what this is, is this is um, uh, how you basically level up your, your guys that are on the mission. So this um, goes on the incomplete side, space face up, in the indicated spot on the top edge of the planet board. So you can see there's a rank up card all the way up at the top there. Now, I'm going to keep it here because I can't read that far up. So I want to be able to pick it up and look at it. So it's just going to be down here in front of the camera. Um, but technically, they got a spot up north for it. Um, and let's see. When playing the campaign, you should draw two rank up cards. Uh, yeah, so normally you draw two and you choose one. But for this tutorial, they already chose the rank up card for us. Then it says, take the next card, which is the unique discovery. So we're not supposed to look at it. And it goes face down in the space on the top that says unique discovery. Uh, let's see, hope oh, that goes here. 
So here you go. If you gain a unique discovery and there's no card left here, gain a success instead. So that goes there. Uh, unique discoveries are unique for this particular landing mission. So Eye of the Void is the only mission where you can get that particular discovery. So um, that's something to gun for, right? Um, there's a lot of stuff you might get or not get on this mission, but that's one of the ones that we absolutely want to get. Okay, so then it says take the next card from the tutorial deck, A, M01, which you can see it's titled there, M01. So that's mission one. Place it face up on the mission space over here. So let's read it first. So, scattered across disparate sections. This is flavor text, apparently. Uh, objective, regroup in Sector 4. All crew members need to be present. Whenever someone enters Sector 4, don't forget to go to the log listed there. When you fulfill the objective, you'll be asked to discard this mission. So, fair enough. Um, so, here we go. This is our mission. So, that goes right there. Uh, very straightforward so far. The space on the bottom right is for a global condition card. The starting global condition card is already printed on the uh, planet board. So it's not a special card. <coughs> uh, but you may be instructed at some point to place another card there, which will replace it. So um, uh, these global conditions just apply no matter where you are on the planet. And basically it says, states that you have unlimited supplies, which um, uh, I guess we're not going to have every mission. And um, anytime we travel, we uh, have to uh, discard a die or roll a danger die to move to a connected sector. So that's a, a, a rule for travel. Then it says, take a look at the sectors on the planet board. The number of sector of a sector is shown at the bottom right of the sector space. So, for example, that's sector six. This is sector one and so forth. Um, 1, 2, 6, and 7 contain a pre-printed point of interest. Sector 3 has an empty space. Uh, sector 3 being that one up there. And uh, uh, so do 4, 5, and 8. So you can see that here. Uh, the lines connecting some of the sectors represent available travel paths. So, for example, you can travel from here to there along this line. Um, actually, no, it's the other way around because it's the arrows. You have to follow the arrows so that you can go from here to here. But see that little minus sign? You can't go backwards. You can only go this way. So that's some of um, the criteria here. Uh, okay, <clears throat> let's keep going. Take the top 11 cards from Tutorial Deck A and place them face down next to the planet board. Okay, so what these are, these are point of interest cards. So um, we have a whole slew of them, but these ones, of course, are uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So these, of course, are going to be used for this mission. And basically, uh, as you travel to the various places, uh, if you've ever played Seventh Continent, this is very similar in concept. Um, you're going to put these point of interest cards down, and then that's going to fill in the spaces, and then you um, interact with those cards. <clears throat> locations and sometimes you're gonna see that like some cards repeat themselves uh, like here there's three P000 cards so in that case uh, you randomly pick one because uh, you could get any of those three so it it adds some variability to the uh, to the mission so anyways <clears throat> um, uh, the best thing to do is just keep them in order because uh, you're gonna be called draw a specific numbered card. So it's not like you shuffle these and they're randomly selected or anything crazy like that. Um, so I'm going to just set it over here uh, underneath the camera. Okay, that's done. Take the top cord, four cards of tutorial deck B. And so what these are, these are the injury cards. And apparently these are like uh, much friendlier versions of injuries than uh, the regular game. And so um, these are just a scratch injuries. <laughs> Um, and then, of course, uh, I guess that's when you actually get the injury. So uh, what does it say to do with them? Uh, just place them next to the board. So I'm going to put those underneath the camera as well. 
Uh, whenever you're instructed to gain one of these injury cards, um, it's just saying refer to the tutorial. Fair enough. Place the mini for Amir in Sector 1, which is called Twisted Wreckage. So I'm going to move the camera here. You can see this is Sector 1, Sector 2. Amir, just to remind you, is the science guy. He's Bill Nye. So he's here. And it says, player to the left of Amir uh, goes in Sector 2. So that would be security. Security is there. <clears throat> and then uh, the player to the left, uh, which is engineering, is with, so science and engineering are together. That sort of is thematic. And then uh, recon and security are together over here. Also thematic. All right. Um, excuse me. Uh, keep going. We already placed all of our tokens. Uh, and these tokens is what they're talking about. You place those next. Read, car sh read mission one aloud. Well, we sort of cheated and did that already. So now we're ready to take our first action, according to this. So um, basically, we're going to do rounds. Everybody gets two actions on their turn. <clears throat> and then once everybody's taken their two actions, uh, then the round is over. And then we start the next round. <clears throat> Sorry, getting caffeine. Okay, um, Amir has to go first. So I gave the first token to uh, Joppy, but I was wrong. It has to be Amir, according to the tutorial. And so basically, <clears throat> here's what we got. We got Twisted Wreckage here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little better. And it says we need to force the bulkhead open. So here's a couple... Uh, uh, of the symbology things that we got to get our arms around. So um, first things first, this is just flavor text, um, but part of the story. This symbol here, it looks like a, a red cassette tape. Uh, at least to me it does. Uh, what that means is you can't travel. So we're stuck there. And, and likely what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to resolve the twisted wreckage and then we're going to put another point of interest card over top of it and then that'll allow us to travel that's you know big brain thing there but um <clears throat> just sort of helping you to understand like how the mechanics are are working so that symbol means we can't travel so you can't just like get up and leave um and thematically that makes sense we're we're basically we crash landed and we're stuck we got to force the door to open so in order to force the door to open, you can see this here, this little arrow symbol right there. That is a special action. Uh, you get two actions per turn, but only one of them is allowed to be a special action. You can't do two special actions a turn. Now, I can tell you from reading the rule book, special actions can be in a whole bunch of places. It can be on the point of interest like this. It could be over here on the global card over here. It could be even on the mission. And there could be like all kinds of special actions all over. Um, attacking like an enemy, you know, that's like an alien or whatever, uh, could be a special action. So there's, sorry for the hand getting in the way. So the special actions uh, could be in various places. But uh, right now there's only one place and that's this one, force the bulkhead. Now, uh, right after that arrow symbol, you see these two dice. That means we have to do a dice check. And a dice check is uh, the Monopoly part I was telling you about. And I don't mean to be, because it's, it's a lot more than just Monopoly. But So there's a whole step-by-step -step dice check uh, guide on what we do for dice checks. And so uh, we're going to go through that, of course. And so basically uh, what it's telling us to do is for our first move, uh, there's really nothing at all. Well, okay, let me back up. Here's our actions. We can travel, rest, prepare, lift off, or special action. So lift off is not possible because we're not we don't have a lander. Uh, we have to go to a certain spot and get a lander. Prepare is probably the only thing we could do besides the special action. We can't travel, I just explained why. There's no point in resting. Resting lets you recover your dice and um, there's no dice to recover. And I'm just realizing I made a mistake. Uh, I never grabbed our dice. Where the heck did I miss that? Uh, take the section dice for each crew member as per the images on the right. Okay. 
I am going to have to, okay, let's talk about this. So uh, they have each crew member and they're showing a picture of the dice that each crew member gets. So uh, let's go over that real quick. And I apologize, I totally missed that part of the setup. So we're starting with security here and they're gonna use three dice and it's gonna be this one, this one, and this one, and then a green and a blue. <clears throat> All right, so here's some fundamentals. When you are looking at your dice and preparing your game, you always want these little symbols on the corner to be face up. Um, if So basically the face up symbol here is the most common symbol and you can see it's gonna be on 50% of the, it's on three of the six sides. So what that means is that means this is a die that's very strong chance you're gonna roll a shield. So um, the game uses that type of symbology and so the security person is going to have three red dice, a green and a blue. Now I grabbed the wrong blue here. My apologies. And how do I know that? Because the green and the blue are supposed to be basic dice. That's what this is. This is a basic symbol. Um, and that's the most common symbol on those dice. Okay, so the security person is gonna have exactly those dice. And then uh, let me move the camera over to the security person. And then you arrange them. The order that they're arranged is, does not matter, but they go, so the blue goes into the blue column, green, and then of course there's three red. Now, um, these little chevrons represent uh, rank. This guy's rank one, you can see that here. So he can't have any dice in these, spaces until he gets to the right rank. Now, um, <clears throat> I said that the uh, order doesn't matter, and it doesn't. What matters is the face, which you see. Uh, that's the most common outcome. The color of the dice does not necessarily represent, like, like the security guy is going to have more red dice than the other ones, uh, because red is sort of a security, you know, because it's got little that's a little arm you know strength and then the shield right so they would be more of the fighty fighty type dice right they're more of like an attack die uh green i think is more of a environment dice uh you know biology and then blue is more of a science um engineering kind of thing so um so i think you're going to see each character specialize a certain way but that doesn't mean that the security guy can't have a science or a or a biology type of die, like the green or the blue. They, they get all three. Um, it's just they may specialize. And then uh, the other thing to notice is that the security guy here, if you roll a basic die, that's what that little picture is, he can turn it into a wrench. And a wrench, by the way, is a blue special symbol. So this guy, uh, of course, also has a special ability where he can spend one charge to draw a chosen card from the discard pile. And I don't think the tutorial uses charges, so we're gonna see those later. And the charges, of course, would go here, and I think that's what this two means, is that's the number of charges. They, I, I'd have to look it up. Sorry, I don't wanna mislead you. Okay, so now we gotta go through and do the other one. So the science person is going to get one red uh, basic die, and then a green basic and DNA, and then a blue basic and science. So this is what the science person is gonna get. I'm gonna bring this over. Okay, I'm gonna pause and then I'll do the other two and then I'll show you uh, what they start with. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so the recon you can see has a red specialty with the strength, the green, I don't even know what that symbol is. It looks like navigation. Um, and then some basic dice 
And then the uh, the blue has the wrench and the pickaxe. So that's the engineer, which makes sense. And they do have a thing on the back that lets you look up what the symbols are. So I'm going to do that right now. That uh, Scouting. I was actually pretty good. Navigation. So that's a scouting symbol, the little arrows. So it's a compass. It's meant to look like a picture of a compass. Um, <clears throat> okay, so getting back to uh, where we were. Uh, we're going to do this particular action here. So um, i got to grab this and get back to the page we were on. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, this is very perspective prescriptive so it tells us what to do so we're not even making choices in the tutorial um, I'm sort of okay with that because uh, I you know it's nice to to learn as I go <coughs> um, maybe you too maybe this is boring to watch though okay so it's gonna say he's gonna do the special action yeah let's get back to the symbology this is a dice check so he gets to choose any number of dice that he has and roll them. And that's his, quote, dice check. And then uh, based on what he rolls, if he rolls a arm, a shield, or a compass, then he gets the green result. If he gets anything else besides those three, then he gets the red result, which um, uh, thankfully they follow common sense. Green is good, red is bad. And believe it or not, yellow is the best. <clears throat> so that's a little odd to me, but um, yellow is the best outcome. Uh, but uh, green, good, red, bad. Now, one other thing to point out is there's this little red arrow pointing up. So even if you get the bad outcome, you still get the green outcome. So no matter what, you succeed at opening the bulkhead. So tutorial... I'm going to give you all kinds of ways out. But it's actually a really great card to learn. Because um, that little red arrow is easy to miss if you don't realize what it's doing or what it's for. <clears throat> okay. Uh, that roll the orange thing, that's, let's roll one of these um, uh, danger dice, which then there's a chart that we use to see what bad thing happens to us. Um, the green one there says gain one success token. And then replace the card with P101, which is one of our point of interest cards. So exactly what we just talked about. Uh, the Twisted Wreckage, you know, we overcome, we open the door, and it's no longer um, Twisted Wreckage. It's now going to be something else, you know, whatever the next card says. So, so Mr. Science Guy, Amir, needs to force the bulkhead open. All right, now here's the problem. He doesn't have the arm, he doesn't have the shield, and he doesn't have the compass. And how do I know that? Well, because if we look at the uh, the dice, um, so he has a basic red die, and I'm just going to grab one from the pool. This is a basic red die, right? Um, his special symbology is if he rolls a basic symbol, he can turn it into a science. Well, that doesn't do us any good. Science doesn't uh, help us here. And then you can see this is uh, what's called an accident. And you got three sides that are going to be the basic. That is an anything, so he has a 1 in 6 chance of getting one of these symbols that he needs. And uh, 1, 2, 3, actually there's 4 sides of this one are basic. 4 basic sides, uh, a vanguard symbol, which is a wild, or an accident, which um, isn't going to be bad in this situation, but if there was an accident um, thing on here, it could be bad. So. Um, that's just for example what the basic die looks like. So the science player has those dice to choose from. So you can see he's got um, <clears throat> basic blue, basic green, uh, basic red. In fact he has two... Oh, I'm sorry, oh gosh, I almost screwed up here. Uh, I grabbed this from the pool. He does not have this die right here. Um, so that's what he has. He has two blue, two green, and one red. Uh, but the uh, the blue one, you can see is the specialty one, is the science symbol. The other one is the DNA helix. So uh, he's not very well equipped to succeed. Now, there is an option here. 
and it's one that I probably would do, although the tutorial is not going to let us do it. And uh, the rules allow you to roll zero dice. So you're going to basically choose to fail. And if you choose to fail, then you still succeed. Yeah, let me get the camera oriented here. So if you fail, there's that little arrow, so you're still going to succeed. So you don't have to waste, waste dice on this. Now, the, the basic mechanic of this is as you spend dice, you then have to rest to recover the dice to get them back. So think of it like Mage Knight or any other deck building game like Marvel Legendary. You draw your hand of cards, right? And then you spend them and then they go in your discard pile. And then after um, they all go in your discard pile, then you reshuffle and start again. Well, in this case, instead of cards, it's dice. So those dice, once you use them, they go into your spent pool and then you have to rest, which is an action, uh, to get them to come back. And they don't all come back. It's uh, only half of them come back. So it's, a, it's an interesting little mechanic. Um, <clears throat> now, every time you rest, it spends supply points. And supply points are very limited. And I think that's going to be one of the, the... It's one of the mechanisms in the game that can pressure you to do things you don't want to do. Um, this particular mission has unlimited supply. So we can rest as often as we want on this particular mission. Okay, let's keep going. Let's do what the tutorial is telling us to do. So he's going to do the special action. Uh, he needs to do a dice check. It's one of the main mechanisms. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, da, da, da. So at the start of the dice check, the crew member performing the check takes any number of dice from their board. Uh, to estimate the number of dice, you have to look at the symbols like we were just looking at. However, in this case, the red outcome space has an arrow pointing up to the green, which means that even if the action fails, so it's actually explaining, you know, what I just did. Looking at Amir's available dice, he has no dice with any actions that get to the green outcome. Um, <clears throat> so he would have to choose to roll no dice or just accept the red outcome. Uh, he could choose to roll a die, and if he rolls that one out of six chance Vanguard symbol, he actually could pass this. Now, I don't know if that's a good use of your dice. I mean, that's part of the strategy part of this. But um, So they're actually uh, in here in the tutorial saying exactly that. So I'm really glad because that's been going through my mind the whole time I'm looking at this. Uh, so uh, what it's going to say is he wants to roll the red and blue die, which to me is crazy. But it's part of the tutorial, so let's do it. Um, and which red and blue die? It's the basic one. So basic blue and basic red. Now, uh, they're saying that that's what he wants to roll, and I think it has to do with his cards. So we haven't talked about his cards yet. So if I zoom out here, during a dice check, he can re-roll. So he can spend this card to do that. And remember, he has two cards in his hand. Um, he can discard an injury card, and that's if he has two matching symbols, he can do this. Uh, here, if he has two matching symbols, he can refresh, or he can discard an event card he just drew. And I have a feeling he's supposed to have this card in his hand. Yep, he is. So I'm going to discard one of these, or put it back. Uh, there's an order you're supposed to draw these, and my apologies, I drew them in the wrong order. He's supposed to, during a dice check, uh, nope, not that one, he can move one from the roll pool to the owner's spent pool to turn one to any chosen result. <clears throat> that is the key thing here. So he's supposed to use this card, according to the tutorial. So um, so what happens? Well, first of all, let's talk about like what uh, the rules allow you to do. So uh, he is this guy. He's choosing these two dice. Since this engineer is in the same location as him, the engineer can choose to give dice to him. Now, um, those dice stay with the engineer. They, you don't mix them up. Don't ever do that, because that would be a nightmare. <clears throat> but the engineer can take dice out of his pool and say, you can use, you know, uh, this die, this die, and that die, for example. And um, is it one, is it an unlimited die, or maybe it's just one die? I'll, I'll look it up, because we're not doing that for this turn. I'm just helping you to understand. It's called an assist. So you can assist them, and maybe you're limited to just one die. It doesn't matter. The point is you can give them a die. And uh, that die, uh, so then uh, what happens is you take the dice and then you roll them. So there's four conditions of the dice. They're either 
over here, which is in the, uh, what's that called? That's the available dice. They're in your hand. That's condition two. They're rolled. So let me roll them. Okay, this is what I rolled, right? So now they're in what's called the dice pool, which is just like this virtual space, you know, above here, because uh, we're those are dice ready to be spent. And then after you spend them, they go into the spent pool. And I'm using the wrong character here, but you get the gist. So um, that's what I rolled, which is the crappiest roll of all time. But here's what they're uh, telling us to do. Uh, they want us to simulate that he rolled. Oh my gosh. They want us to simulate that he rolled exactly that, except it looks like this. The blue one is basic and the red one is the alert. <laughs> so um, I actually rolled exactly what they wanted me to do, just opposite color. Okay, so um, so right now this is what's called the roll pool. So uh, I hate, I already dislike reaching across my table, but it's it's like up here, you know, for that character. So they're ready to be spent. So then what he would do is he would go through his hand of cards and he wants to play this card. So during a dice check, he's gonna move one from the roll pool to the spent pool. And it says owners, because remember, he could have borrowed a die from somebody else. And so that's what I was saying. Um, keep everything in front of their owner. So he's going to move this accident one to the spent pool. And then uh, he can turn the other one to any chosen result. And then he would turn it into a vanguard. So now he got the result that he's looking for. And then this card goes into the discard pile, like so. And so now he has just one card left in his hand. Um, so uh, in doing so, now um, if we go through our checks here, we have, so he rolled the dice, he modified the results by using section cards, okay? Then we're gonna check for dice combination and that's, all that's saying is uh, if you wanna use the bottom of a section card, that's dice combinations. Uh, there's no dice left. He's already spent both of them. So, uh, or he spent one, he's going to spend the other. If there's injury and danger dice, those would get resolved now. Resolve special effects, mark outcomes. And that's what we're gonna do now, and that's spending the dice. Uh, I guess spending the dice is at the end, but um, you do it as you go. So marking the outcome. What you do is you take this purple uh, token here, and you come over to uh, the force, the bulkhead. So since he rolled, or he achieved a vanguard symbol, he got this outcome here. Well, actually, we would do it like that. He has the green outcome and not the red outcome. So you mark it because you don't do it right away. That doesn't occur until later. Uh, but the good news for us is it's actually gonna occur now, but there's other things that could potentially happen. So after you mark that outcome, um, you know, other things could happen and then you eventually resolve the outcome. Okay, so uh, the dice go into the spent pool then the outcome happens, and so here, this would get discarded. Back to the thing. We're going to gain a success token, which is, I believe that's this. So we gain a success token, and then it says we're gonna replace the card with P101. So that is this. And there you can see, we're now on the outer surface of the lander. And so um, the next action here is another special action, take the surface samples. So I'm gonna put this on like so, and then everybody sits on that space. And I still have one more action to do. And let's see what they tell me to do next. Um, I'm guaranteeing you it's gonna be to travel. <clears throat> okay, so it's telling us to modify the results, uh, mark the outcomes, we did that. Resolve the outcome, we did that. And then um, that ends Amir's first action. Uh, entry, uh, but for now, let's move on to his second action. So let's do that. So he's now in the outer surface card. So it does not have that symbol that prevents him from traveling anymore. Uh, so the travel will let him go somewhere. Each path detects where he can go. Uh, there's only one path he can take. I hope you can see that it would get, take him from one over to five here. And so um, 
there's a global condition remember over here under travel so uh, the travel action you resolve what this says uh, and that's just you know a basic travel and then you have to also resolve uh, well actually what this says that symbol there is saying you have to do this uh, this travel action here is you have to just exhaust a die move a die to your spend pool so sometimes you're not doing the global condition um, you do the global condition when you see that symbol that's what that means okay um, so global condition instructs that you have to resolve a travel icon you must spend a die move it from available to spent or roll a danger die for the purpose of this tutorial he's going to roll the danger die uh, so we need to roll it and apply its effects and it doesn't tell us what the outcome is so we actually do get to roll this one so um, so okay so we grab a danger die here and let's try it so I just rolled that symbol which I don't know if that's good or bad let's find out so we got this is the nasty side that's when you have multiple danger dice um, let's go hold on I don't know what that means E F G H okay I don't know we got A B C and D here let me look up like what does it mean okay <clears throat> so here under travel if we zoom in really close there see that looks like the Zelda Triforce um, that's what I thought it was I thought it was just a Zelda Triforce symbol but that's actually the letter T inside of there so it's a triangle with the letter T inside of it I hope you can see that and so now when you look at the uh, danger die reference card uh, these little letters mean something and then if you go here to the T see that's the that's the Zelda Triforce <laughs> so there's two things and so I rolled the this one so I gained the just a scratch injury so uh, let me grab one of those so basically the just a scratch injury um, uh, if I have just a scratch injury I cannot gain another injury um, if I gain another I ignore it so um, what I have to do now is I take an injured die and bring it over to the character so this is his card so it goes under the first injury location which is here and then the injury die itself has to go in one of these three columns and if it pushes a die into a chevron rank that you're not ranked at you lose the die you have to it, you don't lose it forever but it goes you know into your section box and you won't get it back until the next mission but we have plenty of room here you can see I have um, three spots for blue so I'm just gonna move this blue down and the injury always goes on the first row so it gets priority all the other dice get bumped down now I um, I had room in all three columns to put it and because uh, you could see I only have one red die I have spot for two red I have two green dice I have spot for three so it doesn't matter where I would have put this injury die it would not have impacted me or made me lose a die in the tutorial but just to help you understand the the dynamics and the rules <clears throat> that's how that plays out okay so what it also means is that in the future when I do a dice check uh, Amir has to roll that injury die <clears throat> along with his other dice and after he rolls it he compares the results so you can see there's a little water drop on there which actually matches this so if he gets the water drop then he's gonna have to exhaust the die if he gets any other symbol he's fine nothing the injury didn't impair him during that action so it, it's sort of like this nagging annoying type of injury that can occasionally interfere with what he's trying to do okay so he moves uh, just like the the price is right you know the guy who's going up the mountain and then he gets over to here and um, uh, we have to do log 227 so let's do that
That was a TV show back in the 80s, 227. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so um, hopefully you were able to read it if you couldn't hear it. Um, <clears throat> to proceed. Now it's saying, uh, this is the part I like, because if I was using the logbook, I can sort of read ahead sometimes, and um, I don't know, you sort of get a sneak peek on what's going to happen. Uh, so here, place point of interest, P109 in Sector 5. So... We go into our handy dandy deck, find P109, and there she be, the carbon mesh, which is exactly what the scenario was saying. So, oh, oh, I'm sorry, it keeps going. As you can see, this sector appears to be a dead end. The only, uh, there's actually rules in here. The only other path connects this sector with Sector 6, but unfortunately the directional area indicates that you can only travel from 6 to 5, but not from 5 to 6. We talked about that. <clears throat> Amir's turn is now over, but before continuing, take a moment to look at two interesting features of the card we just revealed. So let's do that. The special action has the danger icon, so Ranger Danger. So that means that if you perform the special action, the danger die gets rolled along with all of your other dice. Makes sense. The special effect between the name of the action and the outcome rows instructs you to resolve the red outcome if you roll at least one accident. So this one is an immediate special effect. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> what they're referring to is this symbol here. It looks like a, an iPhone, like a battery charge symbol. Um, like an empty battery, right? That's not fully charged. Uh, it has little red lines on the left and right side. There's a red version of this and there's a green version of this. But in both cases, they're immediate. You do it immediately. And so what it's saying is if I roll dice and I get another one of those accident symbols, I got to do the red outcome, which is go to log 112. Um, I believe that's what that means. Um, uh, and it'll be explained in the rule book. So uh, let me pause and look in the rule book and make sure. <clears throat> yeah, so in the back of the book, it shows those symbols right there. So you can see the red is in the middle. Um, look at the very top under special effect icons. You can see the red empty battery symbol. Uh, it basically means that you're going to do the red outcome, and it's immediately. Um, you can see there's a green and a yellow version as well. Then there's one that has a little play symbol, like a VCR play. Um, that is for progress markers that moves the marker to the right. And then you can see it's also going to move markers to the left. So um, so those symbols can, you know, they, they happen immediately and they, you know, they have various effects based on, you know, what's inside of them. So we move to the location and now his turn's over. And, and technically speaking, uh, when he did this special action, he went down to one and now he's down to zero. And his turn is now over, and he has to draw an event card. Um, I think that for the tutorial, we are not drawing event cards. Um, normally, you draw and resolve an event card. However, they're introduced later in the tutorial. Skip that for now, but it's telling us to go to log 50. So, boy, i got to pay attention. These, these go to log things are all over the place. Um, sorry, just opening up the app again. Okay. So now we got to do the second 
crew members turn instructions on page 19 of the rule book so I can't have that music playing while I am uh, trying to record here so okay so now uh, we move to the second crew member which if you remember is it's always clockwise from the first player so now it's going to be the security person who is in the other card up here so let me put you up here so you can see what that card looks like and this one is introducing to us the concept of progress. So um, you should be familiar with some of the symbology now. Uh, we can't travel. We are in a half buried carbon surface and the plasma from the salvo is still melting through the hole. So we need to rescue um, the oxygen tanks, like it said. <clears throat> There's one special action here it's going to have to result in a dice check, but if we roll an accident, then the red outcome, uh, the red progress is going to move. So what this is, is we have basically look at it this way. These are progress markers, and you can put two of them here off the board. They're technically off the board, but I'm going to put them next to it. Every time I get a green result, I move this up. Every time I get a red result, I move this up and whichever one wins is going to happen. So we either um, uh, have something nasty happen to us or we can finally, uh, you know, save the supplies, right? So, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, the, you know, this game was made in China and, and it's all about supplies. Um, they like their supplies parties. Um, so, um, so anyways, uh, we, we got this here. Uh, my kids like the joke. I, I, you know, you guys, I didn't ask you to come to my channel, so you guys got to just stick with it and deal with it. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> thanks for, thanks for joining me. Um, so yes, uh, we, these uh, tokens are off. And in case you're wondering, because like I had to like really look closely in the rules and it, and the rule book is superb in this regard. Um, it is the the first time you get it it's one two three four and only on the fourth one does this happen it is not uh it's not like this like you don't start with them on the first spot and then it's one two three it's not that it's also not one two three and then this happens it's truly you need four successes so the first one is going on the second third and then fourth okay so i'm just going to put these cubes off to the side um you know you can keep them in the in the box but um so the security character needs to get the green outcome excuse me so what is the green outcome it is any die <laughs> just any color die gets him an, a green outcome the thing is, is if he still has to roll them and if he gets the accident symbol then it causes the um the other outcome to happen so let's see what it's telling us to do. Okay, so it's explaining the type of dice check, which I just went through. Uh, choose dice. To maximize your chances of making as much progress as possible, take all five dice from your crew board and place them in your hand. Any other crew member present chooses not to assist you. So it's telling us to roll all of them. Um, now, uh, to start stepping you through the uh, the process here. Uh, so we're gonna do the dice check. So we're choosing the dice. He's gonna choose to roll all of them. Then here's where you add injury and danger dice. Um, there is no injury and danger dice to add in this case. But remember, uh, Amir is injured, so he would have to add that injury die. Uh, Amir's location that he moved to actually has a danger die in the dice check, so he would have to add a danger die. So step two is when you add those, then you roll the dice. Um, the assist, by the way, is part of step one. So when you're choosing, the somebody may assist you, but like the tutorial said, uh, nobody's allowed to assist. Then we modify the results, check for dice combinations, resolve the injury and danger after you do that, and then uh, resolve special effects, mark the outcomes, spend the dice, and then resolve the outcomes. Um, the rule book, uh, states that marking and then waiting to resolve is important. I don't 
fully understand how or why yet, but I, I do understand at least at an intellectual level why they're saying that there's something that must happen between here and here that could um, could change things. So um, let's grab all five of his dice. I'm going to reach off camera here. That's these. Now, do they let us roll them? Yes. Uh, yes. So, let's roll. All right, so we got this situation. Now, what the tutorial was saying is if I rolled any accident dice, two of them, in fact, uh, we would have been in trouble. And here's why. Oh, I was going to grab the card. Uh, it's printed on the on the game board. See that empty battery chimp symbol? Remember, that's immediate. So what it would do is you have to spend your two dice to move this one, two. Which, that's not the end of the world because, you know, it's not like uh, it made it all the way to the end, right? But if you're spending two dice on that, that means you only have three dice left. Because uh, remember, that has that's an immediate effect. So now I only have three dice left. So the three dice would then move this, one, two, three, because any color die moves it forward. And you see what happens? I, I don't successfully close the card. But that's not the case here. I got five successful dice. So take your pick. Um, so it's telling us to skip playing any cards. Um, and then we're going to resolve any special effects. Mark the outcome, spend the dice, and then resolve the outcomes. And you do check the tracks from top to bottom. So if the marker is in the outcome space, uh, remove it and apply that effect. If you're applying green, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you did not make a progress, um, try again next turn. Uh, in the rare case that you progress both tracks to the end, uh, the outcome of the green would replace this point of interest with another card and the red track would never be resolved. So that's a really good, um, that's a very thorough tutorial because that was actually a question going through my mind. So I'm very uh, glad that they, uh, they presented that situation. Um, I think it would be highly unlikely that that would happen in a tutorial, but still I'm really glad they covered that situation. So um, all five dice, go into the spent pool. It doesn't matter what sides face up. They're just all spent. And sorry for the shaky camera. Um, I'm realizing that uh, those two characters are really far away and I'm reaching really far across the table to get to them. And that's what's causing all these issues. Okay, so we gain another success token. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of those, put them over here so we now have two of them. And um, I think, you know, technically per the rules, we're in, there's a Space Ranger. Oh, that's right, our lander crashed. So we're not in the Space Ranger yet. Um, so this goes away. We don't need the purple cubes anymore. And it's saying, uh, so we get the six to replace it with card P102. So let's take a look at that. So here you can see there's two special actions. Use the aid station, which discards an injury and card and die. Now, case in point, uh, if you discard the injury card, that you, does not allow you to discard the die. And if you discard the die, that does not allow you to discard the card. So um, those are two separate things. And of course, this lets you discard both, which is great. Um, rest and recover lets you refresh four dice and draw two cards. Okay, interesting. So I will put that there. Now, both characters are here. Now, here's the curious part. We're out of dice. So what do we do next? I think we're going to rest, because that's all there is left to do. And yes, it's saying uh, first rest action. So the next action we got to do is rest, because in order to travel, like, okay, first of all, can't do either of these. They're both special actions. Already did a special action. So can't do that. Can't travel either, because the travel icon here is to uh, discard a die. Has no dice to discard, right? So, or spend a die is really what it's saying. So there's no dice to spend. So uh, we're going to do what's called a rest. 
So a rest um, is uh, basically uh, we're going to recover half of our dice. So you get to pick, and you round up, by the way. So there's five dice total, and it's it's not the dice that's in the rest pool. It's our sent pool or spent pool. It's your total dice that you have. So uh, in this case, the total dice is in the spent pool, but but just you know helping to clarify. So it's going to be three, because um, you round up half rounded up. So uh, this is the security person. So we probably want the red dice. So I'm going to um, actually I'm going to grab one of each, and then uh, we're going to grab the red one that has a special symbol. We're going to grab the one that has the um, the little arm for strength. Uh, and you know what? I'm actually going to change my mind. We're going to grab the one that has the shield. And then we'll put the blue basic off to the side. So there's the three that we'll grab. And I don't know, maybe it tells us which ones. Refresh any three of your choice. Okay. So now his turn's over. I'm doing a horrible job of flipping over the tokens. But his turn's over. And then we move on to engineering. Cho Ye Young. It's their turn. And then for the remaining crew members, it says... Uh, for player three, take the surface samples. Um, and then for player four, uh, traveling requires you to spend a die. And don't forget to look at the log entry. And then when the round is completed, uh, there's another log we got to do. And then after that, uh, we actually get to play the game. So they don't have like, you must do this, you must do that. After this, um, we actually get to play the tutorial however we like, and then it goes into like some basic rules, which um, <clears throat> we've been covering as we go. So, uh, excellent. I, let's see, I'm at an hour and 17. I'm gonna try to get this whole tutorial in one video. I don't know if I should. I usually quit after an hour and then just upload. Um, you know what, I wanna know if those log entries are actually uh, sounding okay. So I am gonna quit, we're gonna upload, and then uh, I'm going to finish recording this, uh, hopefully tonight, because um, I would like to get this tutorial done. I want to get into the real game. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's see if the sound is coming in okay. Uh, that's been going through my mind. Uh, I may have to switch to the log entries and just read those, um, or come up with a different way to do audio uh, if it's not coming through. Um, on the video. So thanks for watching. As always, stay awesome. Sorry it's taking so long just to get through the tutorial, but um, I think it did say it's it takes like four hours, at least according to the uh, thing. Um, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to need four hours to do this, but we'll find out. We still have a lot of tutorial to do. So um, see ya.